Welcome to my channel where we discuss everything and all things politics, economy and development in Nigeria and around the world. As the United States prepare to elect a new government in November, this channel feel that it is appropriate to remember the time when President, former President Muhammad Buhari revealed that President Donald Trump invited him to the White House and looked him straight in the face and asked him, why are you killing Christians? That is what we're going to talk about right now. In the light of the coming election in America, and then to explain why most Christians in Nigeria and elsewhere are rooting for President Donald Trump to be re-elected while many are not rooting for Joe Biden. In Nigeria and around the world, you will see it the reason why Christians are rooting for Joe Biden. The persecuted Christians around the world are rooting for Joe, for Donald Trump. That's what we're going to look at, the reason why they are rooting for him. And we're going to peg it around what Buhari told us in his meeting with Donald Trump in 2020. Welcome, and if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you. Now, do not think that the United States presidential election does not concern you, it does. Whoever imagines American president influences a lot around the world. Perhaps you may not know that Barack Obama as president of the United States with Biden, the man that is the incumbent president now that Trump is challenging, they instigated the removal of good luck, Ebele Jonathan, as the president of Nigeria. They supported the All Progressive Congress. They literally interfered in Nigeria's election. Yes, they did. A political advisor to, do, uh, to Barack Obama, David Azerok, was sent to Nigeria as a political consultant to the All Progressive Congress. The, op the opposition party at the time. And even it is alleged that that slogan, APC change, was the brainchild of Azerok. Azerok. One of the people that helped Barack Obama to win presidential election in 2008. He was dispatched to Nigeria as a consultant. And that was why, no matter whatever Jonathan would have complained about that election or anything, they wouldn't have even listened to him. So that's how important it is to pay attention to what happened in the United States. Now, Trump is, is, going at, is challenging the person that ran America together with Barack when they did what they did in Nigeria and forced the All Progressive Congress on Nigerian people and today Nigeria is worse off than it was under the PDP. Now let us go to the main subject. Remembering when Donald Trump intervened on behalf of the persecuted Christians in Nigeria. You may ask us, are Christians being persecuted in Nigeria? Well, you, got, you are going to learn a lot in this video. And of course, the screen will teach you quite a lot 
the sources of some of the information. In a 2021 report, Christianity Today stated that Christians are the most persecuted religious group in the world. In a research that formed the basis for the report, Christianity Today listed the 50 countries, listed 50 countries where it is most dangerous to follow Jesus in 2021 and stated that the latest report on Christian persecution finds three in four martyrs are in Nigeria. So when you hear around the world that four Christians were killed in 2021, three of those who were killed were Nigerians. Nigeria was ranked among 10 worst persecutors for 2021. Now the report went on to show that every day 13 Christians worldwide are killed because of their faith. Every day 12 churches or Christian buildings are attacked. And every day 12 Christians are unjustly arrested or imprisoned and another five are abducted. So the reports, so reports the 2021 World Watch List, the latest annual accounting from open doors of the top 50 countries where Christians are the most persecuted for following Jesus. Now, these are the reality. It is not politically correct to talk about things like this, even in developed worlds even in America, even in Europe. It is not politically correct to talk about it. It is to pretend that it doesn't exist. Now, because of that, every politician in Europe, in the United States, including those who are supposed to be Christians, do not want to talk about it. Because it is not politically correct. They are much more interested to talk about uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, and things like that. But they don't talk much about what is going on to Christians around the world. Now, as I said, nobody speaks for these Christians, even in a world that it is believed that Christians are supposed to be the majority in the world today. But nobody speaks for persecuted Christians. That is why Christians are the most persecuted people in, in the world today. But, Donald, Donald, but President Donald Trump was different. He is not perfect as no one is perfect. Not even the Pope is perfect. Because I have seen, if you go to CNN and talk about that, Christians are supporting, even the Christian right in America, the Bible Belt are supporting Trump. They say, why are they supporting Trump? Trump that married has divorced three times. But even those who are criticizing Trump that they have divorced three times, their own divorce is no more different from that of Trump. They look at all the kinds of things and say, why should Christians be supporting someone like that. And those that are saying that, they don't give a damn about Christians, whether in Nigeria or anywhere in the world. You see them a lot in CNN, in ABC News, in a, uh, all kinds of leftist network in America. But that's by the way. Now, Trump was the only person that speaks for, that stick out his neck for Christians, whether in America or in Nigeria anywhere they are being persecuted. Now, one of the countries that Trump intervened when he was president, when he heard about the persecution of Christians, was in Nigeria. And uh, former President Muhammad Buhari was the president of Nigeria at the time. And that was in 2020. Buhari told the story himself. I'm not the one that made up the story. 
Buhari narrated this incident by himself. According to the former president of Nigeria, during a state visit to the United States, he was left alone at the Oval Office with Trump. Speaking in Abuja at the first year ministerial performance review retreat of his second term, Buhari noted that he was the only African amongst the least developed countries that Trump invited in the White House. He said the American president asked him to explain why he was killing Christians in Nigeria. And let me quote Buhari with his own mouth what he said. He said, I believe I was about the only African amongst the least developed countries that Trump invited. And when I was in his office, only myself and himself, only God is a witness. He looked at me in the face and said, why are you killing Christians? I wondered if it were you, because Buhari was talking with his ministers. I wondered if it were you. I wonder how you will react. I hope what I was feeling inside did not betray me before him. So I understood it. The problem between cattle rearers and farmers has been happening for a long time. And there was climate change and population growth. I tried to explain to him that it has nothing to do with ethnicity or religion. It is a cultural thing which respective leaderships fell the nation. Now, Buhari's claim that the clash between farmers and herders was a cultural thing, that it was not religious, did not go down well with the Christian Association of Nigeria at the time. And they reminded him that his response was weak because one o five uh, one fifty Baptists were killed in twenty twenty. Now the then Khan Vice President and Chairman of the Association in Kaduna State, John Hayab, in an interview with the Punch newspaper, said, and I quote: "Buhari and his government will never stop." from amusing us with their tales by moonlight because what is happening in Zamfar, Sokoto, Katsina, Brinimware, Southern Kaduna, Taraba, Plateau, and others cannot be described as a cultural thing. President Buhari's weak story about his conversation with President Donald Trump further confirms why his government does not care about the killings in our country by calling them cultural things. Just this Tuesday evening, I received a report from the Kaduna Baptist Conference president about the number of their members that have been killed by bandits in Kaduna State from January 2020 to date to be 105 and our president will call it a cultural thing all we can say is may god save our nigeria now you could see what trump did he tried to find out what was going on in nigeria he was concerned about the killings of Christians in Nigeria. He was concerned about the persecution of Christians in Nigeria. And because Trump is not a politician like Biden, he was, he's not given to being diplomatic or politically correct. You can see how Buhari described it. The man look at, was looking at him face to face, man to man. They were looking at each other. He said, ask why are you killing Christians? 
He didn't tell him, I heard that you are killing Christians. What is this thing I'm hearing about killing of Christians in Nigeria? What is really going on about Christianity in Nigeria? I heard that they are being persecuted. But he was so frontal. It was like a judge asking a question to a suspect. That was what played out there. That is the kind of president that Donald Trump was. And that was, that's the kind of person he is in his interest about the faith of Christianity. He may not be the perfect Christian. Nobody is, no matter what anybody tells you, there is no perfect Christian existing anywhere. But he was able to make a case. Unfortunately, after he was defeated in 2020, Biden means, which means the Barack Obama crowd now entered the White House. And literally, they didn't talk about Nigeria again. What, what we now saw that even uh, uh, Nigeria was, was removed from the list of consigned countries because even Trump put Nigeria among the consigned countries because of what was going on in Nigeria. He put, Nigeria was put among the consigned countries on the issue of terrorism and persecution of Christians. Uh, but uh, Biden, uh, when they came in, they prepared over it. They don't talk about it anymore. Because Biden doesn't give a damn about what happens to Christians of Yashin in, uh, in Nigeria or elsewhere. So you can therefore understand why Christians in Nigeria and around the world are rooting for Donald Trump because Christianity is the most persecuted religion. Now you have, can, you can, have, you can have, you have seen proof of it. I'm not the one that said it. You see, I've cited authority that said it. And Nigeria is not an exemption. Go and ask Christians what they are passing through in Nigeria, in certain parts of the country. And they will tell you. Now, because of that, Christians tend to look at Trump as a better candidate than Biden, somebody who will care about them. Remember, Trump is for America first. He was much more interested about America first. America, he wasn't about American expansionism. Okay, it's not all about let's make America great again. Let's face an American problem and sort it. But when he heard about what is happening to Christians, he had to put that American force aside to intervene. And former President Buhari told us exactly the kind of intervention he made. And I can tell you for free that that intervention he made in Nigeria was not an isolated incident. Because he was particular about what he worked when he emerged president of America. And as I said earlier, he was not a traditional politician. Donald Trump has never been a, a council chairman in America. He has never been in the state assembly in America. He has never been in the House of Reps. He has never been in the Senate. Unlike Barack Obama and uh, Biden, he was like a new kid on the block, a businessman. So he is he's not given to finesse and uh, all this uh, being diplomatic or being politically correct. He says it the way he feel it. Okay. And uh, what he did to Nigerian president is an indication of the kind of person he is. Now, as of June 2024, Trump, just barely two months on TikTok, has 3 million followers. Barely, it's not, it's not up to two months it has been on TikTok. This Joe Biden has been on TikTok several months before Trump joined. 
Joe Biden has only 355,000 followers. Now, it has been said that most, many people who are following Trump are not even Americans. These are Christians who are worried about the fate of Christianity around the world. And they believe that Trump can put a halt to Christian persecution around the world if he's elected president. So that's why you can now see why people, Christians are rooting for him instead of Biden to win the coming election. That's in Nigeria and African countries. Worldwide too. I don't know how many of you know Bishop Marmari Emmanuel of Christ, the Good Shepherd Church in Sydney, who was recently stabbed in his church and nearly died. Now he has lost an eye. He was among international Christian leaders who are praying for Trump to win because he has been saying it in several videos what will happen to America. He is insisting that if Trump does not win, America will fall. That is prophecy for America. He said America will fall. Bishop Mary, Mary Emmanuel said America will fall if Trump does not win. And then he he's also added that he fear for the fate of Christians in the world if Trump does not win. He said that the persecution of Christians will, go to, will be worse than what we are seeing right now around the world. You can therefore understand why Christians are rooting for Donald Trump. Many Christians see their life today as hanging on the balance. They are being persecuted more than any other religion. And nobody speaks for them. And their only hope right now is Donald Trump. That he will look into their matter. That he will look into their case. That he will not be politically correct like the president of France, like the prime minister of UK, like Joe Biden, like the rest of the Western leaders, he will be very strict in defending the interest of persecuted Christians. That's what I have found out. And that's what I want to share in this video. So that people be aware of the reason why Trump has so much following or followers around the world praying for him to win. It is because they believe that their future hang in the balance, except he becomes the next president of the United States. Thank you for watching this video. And if you are new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, anytime I have a new video, You'll be among the first to know. God bless you. And please don't forget to like this video. Because when you like it, Google will rank it high and recommend it for more people. Thank you and God bless you. Adios.